this morning, God. Lord, we ask your presence to fill this space, God. The Lord, you are welcome here, God. Lord, we outstretch our arms, God, to you, God. We lift up our praise to you, God. Lord, we say thank you on this morning, God. Lord, we thank you for those who are traveling in, those who are on social media watching with us, God. Fill this place, God. Saturate the atmosphere with your presence, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.
and or abandoned, leaving or walking away from a known right, claim, or privilege. It is your right to the benefits of the word of God. It is your right to the wisdom of the word of God. It is your right to the knowledge of the word of God. And no one should be able to take that from you because once you know it, you know it. That's where the wavering coming in. If you got a second guess whether you know the word of God or what you know about the word of God, then you're wavering. You're wavering because you don't know if the word love actually goes with that scripture. 1 Timothy 6 and 10. So it is clear that these men are unbelievers and far from God. They give you just enough of the scripture to convince you and then take advantage of you. There isn't in gold to what they're trying to do. There isn't in gold. So um, the declaration of believers is that we must preserve. That means that we must save and we must persevere. Now persevere doesn't just mean moving forward. That means moving forward forward even when it's difficult because it's going to get hard all your days are not going to be filled with sunshine and rainbows some days you're going to have some dark clouds you're going to have some rain sometimes you're going to have some thunderstorms hurricanes tsunamis but you have to persevere in what you know stand on it all right so I said that my scriptures were 17 through 21, but I have to go back and grab verse 16. And when I read this, this is when the teacher in me came out. So verse 16 says, the, these are murmur, murmurs and complainers, walking after their own lusts, trying to get the biggest piece of pie. That's what that means, walking after their own lust. And their mouth speaking great swelling words. That means they're talking big. They're talking big, but they ain't saying a whole lot of nothing. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. That means they're saying anything they think will get, the in, to get them ahead. Now, I want you to look in your Bibles and I want you to circle the, I want you to circle the word but in verse 17 because that's important. But is actually a word that is used to show contrast. And it shows contrast because what is said before it is one thing, but what is said after it is greater than what was said before. You follow me? Okay, so verse 16 says, they were murmurs, they're complainers, walking in their own lust, having men's persons, speaking great swelling words, okay? And then it says, but. But, and then after that, it says, you beloved ought to remember the words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means that what was said after the but is more important and carries more weight than what was said before the but. We know that they are murmurs. We know that they're complainers. We know they're going to come talking all this stuff. And we know that they're going to say things to try to get them ahead. But you, beloved, you the adored, you the treasured, you the valued child of God, remember Circle that word, remember. Remember is important too. And remember is important because remember means to have in, to have in your mind, to have in your mind, to have in your mind, and be able to bring to your mind. So to have in your mind or to be able to bring to your mind an awareness of something or someone that has seen, known, or experienced in the past. So you can't remember it if it's not already there. It has to be there first. Remember, bring to your mind or 
be able to have in your mind. It has to be already there. So this is nothing new to you. Re re remember is like recall. It's like recollect. It's like being able to bring something that was already in you. So you, if you don't have it in you, that means your foundation has to be there. Your foundation has to be there. You already have learned or been taught things of God. And I know that you have. Because the conversations that I have with you, the conversations that AP has with you, the conversations that Pastor has with you, that's for nothing. That's not for nothing. I don't care how brief it is, I don't care if it's in passing. That's something that we have heard from God concerning you. And so when we take the time to teach you, when you're in Bible study, when you're in children's church, when you're in church, those are words that you're hearing from God. That's another layer being added to your foundation. It's already there and you should be able to recall it at a time when people are challenging what the word of God says, yes, yes, yes. what they're telling you. Now, I know that you're in school, and, and for those of you that are out of school, and for those of you that go to work, and those of you that stay home, or whatever your interactions are throughout the day, there are many things that are subtly. That's how it's unnoticed, because it's subtle. They're not going to come at you with something that is obvious to you. It's subtle because it's meant to distract you. It's meant to catch you unaware. It's meant to leave you in a place where you begin to waver. It's like a seed being planted. And if you don't go check it for yourself, then you'll run with it. You'll run with it. So, um, let me give you an example. So, when, when you're in a grocery store, talking to my young people, or you're in a mall, or you're, you're in whatever place that you're in with your parents, and you are something catches your eye. Now, keep in mind that you know the voice of your parents, do you not? Yes. You know your parents' voice. And I don't care where you are, you can distinguish that from any, I don't care if somebody says, Mom, you know, parents know if that's my child, or to ignore it because that's somebody else's child looking for their mother. We know your voice, you know our voice. You get what I'm saying? You know your father's voice. You know your mother's voice. And they know yours. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so we're in the mall, we're in the store, we're in Kroger, because that's my favorite store. We're in Kroger. And we are looking at something. We're standing so close to our mother. We're standing so close to our father. We're walking with them because that's what we do because we know that that's where our protection and our provision is. My mother, my father is going to keep me safe while I'm in this store amongst people I don't know. If I need something, my mother, my father is going to be able to provide it for me because I don't have money of my own. So that's where my protection and my provision lies. So we're in the store and something catches my eye. And I begin to wander. And I leave the very place where my position where my protection and my provisions are. Because that's what happens. I leave that place, and it seems like just for a moment, but when I turn around, she's not there. He's not there. And so I begin searching the aisles looking for them, and I can't find them. 
And so I began to get overwhelmed and panic begins to set in. And then I realized the only thing that I can do is call their name. Right, right. So I call out their name as loud as I can. And I'm looking for my father. I'm calling out to my mother. And so when I see her in a distance, when I see him in a distance, my heart gets glad again. And like most children, what do we do? We run to the very place that we left. We run back to that place of protection. We run back to that place of provision. Because I know that's the only place where I can be safe. Shiny things catch us off guard all the time. Oh, yeah. Shiny things catch us off guard. And they are a distraction to us and we will walk towards them. But how many of you know that everything that glitters ain't gold? It's not. It looks pretty from a distance, but when you get up on it, you can actually see the scratches and the scars and the the misprints and all that other stuff and everything that glitters ain't gold. So that's what happens. So as followers of Christ, we have a tendency to wander from our Heavenly Father. We leave his side. We leave that place of protection and provision. We do that. He doesn't walk away from us. We walk away from him. And even if it's just for a moment, it feels like a lifetime. Because we walked away. So going back to that word, remember that you circle. So when we're told that to protect ourselves, I used to tell Carrie, and I didn't even realize she was listening until she got older. I used to tell her, don't be the only anything in your group. Because then that means you're by yourself. So if you're, if you're going out with your friends, don't be the only girl. Don't be the only black. Don't be the only whatever. Because that means that if you're by yourself, you have nobody there for support. So I, I caught what she was saying when she started saying, Aaliyah and I are going, or so-and-so and I are going, or so-and-so and I are meeting with. She was never the only in her group. Because sometimes when you're out there and you're doing things, and, and, and God knows as parents, we worry about our kids. We worry about our kids when they start driving. We worry about them when they start dating. And we still worry about them as a grown adults. We never stop being, not worried so much, but concerned. Concerned. So we, 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 uh, so don't be the only anything. Don't be by yourself. You have to have somebody with you. So when you're told that you have to protect yourself or look both ways before you cross the street or don't invite anybody to the house, there's a reason for that. So you have to be mindful of what your parents are taught you and remember the words that were spoken. You were told some good stuff. Your foundation has been laid. And if it's not, it's not too late to lay it. Your foundation has been laid because we knew that, that we would be meeting with false teachers. So remember that we were, remember what we were taught. This remembering is a continual thing. It's not that you remember one day and that's it. It's not a one and done. You remember continually. 
You have to remember continually. You have to repeat the remembering. You must go on all those times in your life. Remember all those times in your life. Don't just remember one day and stop. You have to continually remember. Amen? Amen. Amen. So 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressively, that in the later times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So guess what? The reality of false teachers is nothing new. It's nothing new. You've heard it before. It's been taught before. So their creeping into the church is not new news. You must be committed to what the scriptures teach us so that we may conform to the truth of the text, not the whims of the world. You can't do what the world does. You cannot do what the world does. You cannot do what the world does. Who will, will I, whose voice do you hear the loudest? Is it the voice of the spirit or the voice of the flesh? Whose voice do you respond to? Whose voice is in your ear? You have to remember that these words were spoken beforehand. All right, so we're going to go on to verse 19 that says these are the ones that cause division, worldly minded and devoid of the spirit. What does that mean? So what's another word for division? Separation, very good. So they cause separation within the body of Christ though. Separation within the body of Christ. They're motivated when disruption and confusion arise. You ever see somebody that starts something and then sit back and watch it unfold? Uh -huh. Yeah. They, they, they're motivated when disruption and confusion arise. They like that. They like the drama. They like to see y'all going at it, each other. They like to see you fighting. And it, and it happens more often than not. So when we have a disagreement, we have to seek to do what? Find peace, find a solution to this. Because this can't go on between the two of us. Something has to give, and it has to be something that is gonna cause us to have a resolution to this problem. Amen? Amen. Shipwreck your spiritual life. Ain't that something? Or sow seeds of doubt for what you believe to gain a win. They just want to see you go through something. They just want to see you suffer. They just want to see you doubt what you know. You know what you know. You know what you know. Don't doubt yourself and don't let anyone plant seeds of doubt in you. Amen? Amen. They are worldly minded. What does that mean? They think like the world. They are merely natural. So, so if they're natural, what kind of behavior does they behaviors do they have? Carnal behaviors. Carnal be behaviors. They're driven by the natural, sinful desires and not from any spiritual motivation. So, whose decisions do they go by? Their own. Their own. They go by their own natural desires, their sinful desires, and they have no spirit in them. So they crave for their own appeasement. That's another big word. And that's just gratification or satisfaction. They're looking for their own satisfaction. Their own satisfaction. Okay, so here's another scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 that says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him. So the natural man, the things of God makes no sense to him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. He doesn't know them. He can't figure them out. He can't even operate in them because his, his motivation is natural. He goes on what he knows. He goes on what he thinks. He makes his own decisions. He decides what he's going to do. 
And the Spirit of the Lord has nothing to do with that. Nothing whatsoever. They are devoid of the Spirit. What does that mean? They don't have the Spirit of God in them. They are without it. They are without it. So this is another one. Men are unregenerate. What does unregenerate mean? We know that it's not something. We know that because of the un part. It says not reforming or showing repentance. Not reforming or showing repentance. So if you're not showing repentance, then you're not you're not asking for forgiveness. You're not showing. You just bad. You just bad. You just wrong and bad. Plain and simple. Wrong and bad. Wrong and bad. Now that's a combination. Wrong and bad. Okay, so these type of people are think that just showing up to church on Saturday is the right thing to do. But they live nothing outside of that. So they show up to church on Sunday and then that's it. They don't read nothing during the week. They don't study anything during the week. They don't do any of that. So let me ask you a question. Okay, so I try to go to the gym. God knows I try. I try real hard. <laughs> I do. But if I went to the gym and just stood there and never touched a thing, what is that gonna benefit me? If I never picked up a weight, if I never got on the treadmill, if I never even ran around and walk around the track, what benefit do I have from going to the gym? Other than to say, I go to the gym every day. That's the same thing about these false teachers. They go to church, but that's all that they do. So have you ever for a minute and, and you have to you have to think about God and all that he's doing to prepare us not only for the fact that there's going to be false teachers and, and that we, we have to know who we are to him and nobody should be able to change that in your mind you have to know that you are a child of God you have to know how you belong to God so if you thought for a moment, and I know that some of us are eight and 10 and some of us are times four that and times five that and times six that, whatever. But we, we have to remember that God chose you. He chose you. However small your assignment is, however big your assignment is, he chose you. He loves you. He value, values you. That's what that word beloved means. You are adored. You are treasured. You are valued. All of, all of those words mean that you are his beloved. Amen? Amen. Whew. That verse 20. So it says, I'm almost done. But you, beloved, let's look at that again. Because verse 19, and it holds true no matter where this but is. Verse 19 says there are the these are the ones that cause divisions, worldly minded, and devoid of the spirit. That's what came before the but. This is what comes after the but. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I include 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. That's what came after the but. And what did I say earlier about that but? What comes after the but is much more important. 
So it says Jude gives us instructions on how the believers should contend, fight for the faith. But we are reminded that, like the remember in verse 17, this is not a one and done type thing that you have to do it every day. Now, somebody else is gonna come and tell you um, why you're contending for the faith, but verse 20 and 21 tells us how to contend for the faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, the first one says, build yourselves up in our most holy faith. So that just means that we must be growing in what we know. Being built comes with an understanding that the foundation is already there. The foundation is there and we must grow. We must be growing, which is a continual thing. So we can't learn everything that we need to learn at one point in life and not learn anything more and think that we are okay because we're not. I don't care how many times you read one scripture, you're gonna always get something different out of it depending on where you are in life or what you're going through. So you can't say that I have learned all I need to know about the Bible and about Jesus Christ and I am done. I know it all. It doesn't work that way. I laugh at Kevin a lot of times because he hates going to school. And he hates going to school because he learned everything he knows at Miss Shonda House. Everything that he could ever know in his 12 years of education, he learned at Miss Shonda House. But actually, all he learned was his letters, his numbers, his color. He can read a little bit, he can put some letters together, but that's not all of it. So we're trying to convince him that all you have is a three-year-old education. You ain't even entered into school yet. And you still have 12 more years to go. You see how silly that sounds? You see how you laughing at that? But that's how we think sometimes. That's how we think. We think that we know everything that we need to know. Can't nobody teach us nothing. Can't nobody tell us nothing. Can't nobody show us nothing. Because we know all we need to know and that our relationship with God is solid. But it could get better. So grow. Continue to grow. Be growing in what you know. Amen? Amen. First Corinthians 15 and 1. There go another scripture. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, in which you also stand. Stand firm. Don't just hear the word of God. Stand firm on the word of God. Know that you know that you know that you know. Because nothing can be taken from you when you know that you know it. Amen. Once you learn something, you, you can't, you don't unlearn it. Somebody can come out and convince you that what you thought was not true. But you have to keep in mind that once you learn something, nobody can take it away from you. Amen. You shouldn't let anybody take it away from you. And you don't just read one time. You have to continue to read. You have to continue to grow. Some of us have professions like that. I know I do. I, can, I can't do what they did 10 years ago. I can't do it now because it won't work. That research has learned, has taught us so many different things, especially with COVID. You can't teach the way you used to teach. It's not effective. So you have to be mindful that you know what you know what you know. It's been preached to you, it's been taught to you, you received it, now stand on it. Stand on it. Matthew 7, 24 and 25 says, everyone who hears these words of mine 
and acts. You don't just hear it, but you do something. May be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and it slammed against the house and yet it did not fall. Why did it not fall? Because it was founded on the rock. It was founded on a firm foundation. Whew. The second one is pray in the Holy Spirit. We must pray according to the Holy Spirit and in union with the Holy Spirit. In other words, sometimes sometimes we, we, we say our grace, we bless our food, we say little short prayers when we are touching and agreeing with someone that's in need or whatever the case may be, but sometimes we need to go deeper. Sometimes we need to pray with all our heart and, and we should desire to draw near to the heart of God, amen? So we have to be effectual doers of the word. So is it good just to sit in here on Saturday and and just say or just soak up everything that we have learned or that we are learning and not do anything with it? Never share with anybody? Never call up nobody and say, hey, I was in church today and I was told da 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 and I wanted to share that with you. Is, is it good just to be doing that? No, it's not. Meditate on one, upon the word of God day and night. How can you meditate on something that you're not reading, that you don't have in your heart, that you haven't studied? You have to do that. Because this is how the false teachers get catch you unaware. That's how the subtleness comes in. That's how you, you, you're you in the midst of them and you don't even realize you're in the midst of it. Until, have you ever been in a situation where you come to yourself and you say, how in the world did I get here? Yeah. Because everything that was done to get you there was so subtle and it caught you off guard. But that's how it's meant to be. And put feet to your faith. <laughs> Don't just hear the word of God. Do something with it. Do something with it. The third one says, keep yourselves in love, in the love of God. And I, I dare say, and then I'm almost done. I am done. Um, I want to add waiting anxiously for the mercy of God to that. And I want to add those two together because... When you're waiting anxious, anxiously, that implies that something, that you're trying to receive something. So, as you spend more time with the, in the Word of God, and as you spend more time in prayer with God, He transforms you and you begin to develop a deeper love for God. So it's like a never-ending cycle. You spend more time in the Word, you spend more time praying, transforms you and you fall in love a little bit more. You spend more time in the word. You spend more time in prayer. He transforms you and you fall in love a little bit more. And it's like a never ending cycle. And that's a cycle that we should be striving for. Amen. So Jude, it, Jude sorry, is commanding the believers to stay in love and be constantly in Christ. So there are a lot when I say a lot, there are a lot of imperatives in, in these five scriptures, six scriptures. Um, and they, they are imperatives because they are commands. They're telling you that this is what we do. And it's not something that you do one day and then you're done and you good for the rest of your life. No. You have to keep striving. You have to keep being caught caught, not caught off God, so you have to always be, have something to fight with, amen? Have something to fight with. So, that's my take on, I hope it helped you. Bless God, bless 
God bless, God bless, God. Yeah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that that everything that he gave me, I was able to give to you. If you don't do, if you don't remember anything, remember the word remember. Because that was a big part of what I was studying. The word remember. Being able to recall, being able to recollect. You were taught some good, good stuff. You may not agree with it all, but you're not, not gonna agree with it all because it depends on where you find yourself in your seasons or in your life. You're not gonna agree with it all. You may not be able to receive it all, but just know that one day you're gonna be sitting somewhere and you're gonna be able to recall when somebody said something to me. You're gonna be able to recollect when somebody poured into my life. And you're gonna be able to put that to work. Don't let, young people hear me, don't let what other people think and feel be your standard. You understand? You have to be, even at your young age, you can stand up for what's right. You can stand up for the word of God. You don't have to do what other people are doing. And I know because I see it. I know that they're trying to convince you that boys should be with boys and girls should be with girls. I know because I see see it every day. They're trying to convince you that it's okay. It's not okay. And it's not the norm. It is not. So don't be confused. Don't waver in what you know. You know what you know. Because you've been taught good stuff. You know it. Don't let somebody convince you that what you know is not the truth. Read for yourself. Study for yourself. I know when Pastor Demi was up here last week, she said, how many of you young people read and study? Because she was passing out journals, remember that? She said, how many of you young people Read and study so that you can get a journal. And none of you raise your hand. None of you. None of you. But we're going to change that, right? We're going to change that, right? Because even if you have to take notes on your phone, if you have a phone, and if you don't have a phone, get you a notebook. Get your own notebook and start writing stuff down because you can't hold everything in your head. You can't. Even at your young age, you're, you're going to forget something. So you get you a notebook and you write stuff down. Ain't that what your teacher tells you? When you study, you go over your notes. Studying is not homework. Studying is something that you do on a daily basis. So you 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 study. If you don't do nothing but read over it a couple of times and ask somebody questions about it, ask your parents questions about it. It'll build them up some more. Yeah. Study so that you can have something to remember. Because if you don't have anything to remember, that that's a problem. You need to have something that you can pull from. And you can't pull from it if it ain't there. All right? So you ask your parents for some notebooks. You ask for everything else, ask them for some notebooks so you can write down the word of God. And if you don't have any notebooks, I'll buy you some notebooks. Well, Glenn will buy you some notebooks. But you get some notebooks 
Okay? Alright. Because we want you to be well prepared. Because I'm not going to say if, but I'm going to say when. Because there's going to come a time and a day that you're going to be it's going to come a time and a day. It will. So I need you to be prepared. Okay? All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We get ready to go home. Thank you, Jesus. Was that not a good teaching on today? Yeah. But it's not going to do you no good if you don't do anything with it. How many of you know seven good ways, principles about study? Raise up your hand if you know seven. If you watch this, if y'all didn't watch the video. Y'all didn't watch the video. I gave you seven ways that you can study. Gave them to you. so that you can get this thing from your short-term memory, because right now it's in your short-term memory. And you know when you drive that car out of this parking lot, it has dissipated, evaporated into the mist, into the air. And you'd be like, what did we talk about? I know it was good, what was it? That's what you're gonna be saying. But the Lord has impressed this upon us, you all, because apparently, Many of you, all of us, are going to be going through some things. And look, he says, my people perish for lack of God. So so there's no, oh, Lord, I didn't know that. I wasn't thinking that was, yet. I, it, but it's been said, and it's up to you. you got to do it. Heaven belongs to God. It don't belong to me nor any other human. It belongs to him. And look, did you see Jesus come down here holding hands? With, 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 with Hindus. Did you see Jesus walking around and his ministry and you saw him sitting at the table with other people's ministry? You didn't see that. But look around at the world. They want to put it all together. That's not Jesus' ministry. That's not what he showed us. But that's what we're doing. And somehow the world has us thinking that's all right because that's logical and that's how you come together. I'm not trying. I'm going to tell you now. I am an enemy of anything that is not Jesus. I did not. I am not a kumbaya person. So you got to be okay with being by yourself. I'm okay with being by myself. I'm not a kumbaya person. I don't want to be a part of every organization around here because they sitting at the table with all of this because everybody at the table is trying to convince you of what they do. Quit fooling yourself. Ain't nobody there. Nobody want to hear about my Jesus. And then when you come a part of this group to make it all equal, they're going to say, well, you don't say Jesus, and then they won't say their person, and then we'll talk. Well, I don't have a conversation if it ain't Jesus. I don't have a religious conversation for you if it's not Jesus. But that's not how we stand it. That's not how we stand it. We don't open up the door to, do you know that you do not have to have a conversation with a Jehovah Witness when they come by? Do you know that? Yes. Do you know that? And you ain't got to feel bad. You ain't got to feel bad. Because they walking up to the door with their Bible. And it's been modified. What you talking to them for? Their goal was to go out and proselytize you. And the minute you say, stand, oh, this is what I'm talking about, standing. This is why this is stand. Stop, no, thank you. Uh-huh, then just go to the next neighbor. You, we got to learn how to say no and not feel some kind of way. We got to learn how to do that. That's what this is all about. To all of you that are out there, if I'm still on, I don't even know. But that is what this is all about. We are not standing very well. We're doing this. We're doing this, and we think because it's the way of the world, it seems like a very intelligent way to approach anything. And I, I don't do intelligence in that way. Intelligence without Jesus is foolishness to me. But that's not how it is to the world. We've got to stop. And we got to tell people why. you got to give a reason why you're not going to do it, because but you can't tell them why, because you don't know your word. And you don't know how to say, no, my word of God. 
If somebody asked you and said, well, why don't you think that, that homosexuality is right? What would you say? Many of you will waver. You will waver. Instead of saying, because I am a believer in Christ, I go by the word of God. The word of God says that. So I am not nothing against the person. I'm going to love the person and I'm going to pray. But I got a word that says I must either stand here or I'm not standing. But we don't know how to give an answer, so we unravel in that moment. Well, you know, uh, you know, these are good people. Never said they were bad. That wasn't the conversation, was it? Well, how come you don't love them? I never said I did not love them. I didn't say it. I love the adulterer. I love the robber. I love the thief. I love, because I'm all of them. Y'all not talking back here. This is why this is being done. Because God says the earth is crying out for the sons of God. And we're supposed to be revealed. But the earth keeps crumbling. Because the sons of God won't stand up and they don't know who they are. Trees need the son of God to, to stand up and be seen because they got idiots bowing down before them like they're God. And they need us to stand. And that's all I'm trying. The warrior in you wants to stand. But that fleshly guy around the warrior wants to be liked and accepted. And we can't be that way. We have to be people. I know it's hot. Lord, help me. This is just strong in me. I'm passionate about it. I believe there's a reason for it. I believe that, y'all, the doors of heaven will shut up on any individual who may be thinking they're standing, but they're not. We got to be sure and very sure. Do you hear me? If you're not sure that, you, that you're Christ and you're Christ alone, and you're going to be with him for all eternity, something's wrong. So all I'm saying as a pastor, as a leader for the time that I'm here, that, that I'm your pastor here at Vision, I'm saying to you, we've got to get this thing right. We need this last hour discernment in us. We cannot afford to live without it anymore. Our children are falling. Our grandchildren are falling. Everybody around us is falling, and you know why? Because they saw wavering in us first. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word, for this teaching. Lord, don't let it fall on void ears. Don't, don't, don't let them become so accustomed to it that they, they shut down their listening or they say, well, okay, 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 because every day, we will make a decision that is not pleasing to you. And it ain't about smoking, nor drinking, nor cussing. It, it ain't about that. But it's about compromising. And that's what displeases you. Jesus went to the cross for sin. But to be tra a traitor? That's a whole different. We are so hard on those people that commit the sin that the cross is there for. But what about those of us who don't do all of that, yet we grieve the Holy Spirit? Talking with a forked tongue. I love the Lord. I just don't do nothing he says. I know what the word says. You ever met those people? Every time you tell them something, yeah, I know what the word says. But their actions in that moment is saying, well, I didn't know you knew it because you doing what you do. And you're saying that season should be over with in our lives. You're calling us out from amongst them and you're defining what that means. Don't let us resist what you're doing in us. You are wanting a change in us. And so many are going to want to run from it because it means they're no longer in control. But God, I pray that this time we won't resist. For the Bible says until your Christ is formed, 
formed in us. And that's the, we have a form of godliness, but Christ is not formed in us. So we can compromise and not think it's wrong. We can live this thing out and not think we're doing anything that's, that's displeasing to you. Because Christ is not formed in us. We know his name. We say it on our tongue, but he's not formed in us. So you're calling us out that he may now be formed in us. And you're, 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 you're causing the things that are displeasing in us to come out. And you're using each one of us to do it. And oh boy, oh boy, we don't like it. Don't like it. Don't feel good. And I don't want to be corrected for real. So Lord, help us in this hour to grab hold of what you're doing. This is big. This is big. This is bigger than a new building on the ground. This is bigger than hitting a $300 million lottery. This is bigger. This is bigger. Because this impacts eternity. So Lord, we called on you. We said, Lord, if there's anything in us, that's not like you. Remove it. And then he started doing things to bring it out, to remove it. And now you done got mad. Now you're mad at this person. You're mad at that person. Everybody God uses, you mad at. Because you lied. You didn't want it removed. You want it overlooked. So God, we stand here out of desperation. Desperation. It's hot in here, Lord. We need to build it with some air. We're looking. We need your help. Solidify deal. But I don't want to go into new wine and old wine skin. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. And here you are. You have brought us gold. Don't let us turn our backs on it. Because we've become accustomed to a tradition of going into church, being serenaded by the choir, getting chill bumps, and go home. That day is gone. We've got to be disciples now. You said, you're ready to stop laying the same foundation that keeps getting made. Let us go on to maturity and then let us be that church on fire that you have had your hand on us this entire, you could have told us to scatter, but your hand was upon us to hold us together, not because of a man or a woman, but because of your purposes. Help us, God. I'm asking you, God, as the leader in this hour, help us to be more like you. We thank you for this word in Jesus' name.